This episode is brought to you by Freedom Confectionery. Hi and welcome to today's edition of Gluten-Free and Vegan, What Are You Gonna Eat? Since Freedom Confectionery sent me that box, I've been turning over ideas of what to do with it. <laughs> While simultaneously eating most of the box, <laughs> I suddenly remembered ages ago seeing an idea of putting marshmallows inside a cookie and then you get kind of a squidgy middle. That recipe I don't think would have been vegan and marshmallows have got gelatin in them. So I don't know if, the, if that's gonna have an impact, but we won't know until we find out. So let's stuff them inside some chocolate chip cookies. I'm gonna use a gluten-free and vegan chocolate chip cookie recipe that I found on lovingitvegan.com. I'll stick the recipe in the description for you. First thing I'm gonna do is make up a flax egg. So it's ground flax seeds mixed with hot water. And that goes kind of gloopy and gelatinous, and that's gonna act as a bit of a binding agent. I ground up flax seeds in the coffee grinder, so it's gone nice and powdery. I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of water. Just stir it well, make sure there's as few lumps as possible. And it does thicken up quite quickly. We'll just leave that to the side. Then I've softened some butter in the microwave. I'll stick a link to the video that I did for it, but you just steam the inside of a microwave with a bit of boiling water, and then put this in the hot microwave. But don't microwave the butter itself, because it'll just melt. <laughs> And be a disaster. So it's half a cup, which is about 112 grams of vegan butter. Mm, that might be a bit too soft. Then a cup of sugar, about 200 grams. I'm gonna use a hand blender because it's quicker <laughs> and easier going on my joints, but feel free to do it by hand as well. Not a problem. Once it's all creamed together and fluffy, I'm gonna put that to the side and clean up the kitchen. Use a bigger bowl. I'm gonna sieve two cups of gluten-free flour. It's about 272 grams. One teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon of salt. And sieve those together. The reason for sieving flour I just found out is partly to get rid of lumps, but also to get lots of air into the mixture as well. Give this a, a very light stir just to mix everything together. Here's where we're at with the flax mixture. So you can see it goes very gloopy. You can also use chia seeds to do this with, ground chia seeds. I'm sure there's probably other seeds that I have yet to come across. Stick them down in the comments, let me know if you can think of any. I'm gonna stir in a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Preheating the oven at 180C, about 350 Fahrenheit. So by the time I've shaped all of the, uh, the cookies, it should be nice and warm in there. Pour the flax mixture into the cream butter and sugar. Give it a really good stir. And then add the mixture into the flour bowl. Work this into it. I'm trying to get the powdery bits well incorporated into the creamier stuff. Once that's kind of done, then I'll add in the chocolate. So we're at that stage. Everything looks like it's really well combined. I'll interrupt myself here and introduce you to this week's video partner. Freedom Confectionery is a family-run business that's based in Lancashire, which is over the Pennines from me in Leeds. They've sent me over a box of their yummy sweet goodies. <laughs> and I've got marshmallows, more marshmallows, chocolate-coated vanilla marshmallows, chocolate-covered strawberry marshmallows, and chocolate-coated strawberry gummies. The products are suitable for vegetarians and vegans, and of course, people following a halal or kosher sort of diet lifestyle. And they are dairy and egg-free, GMO-free, soy-free, gluten-free, and hopefully very delicious. I'm gonna chomp on one of their bars. Mmm. So it's like a, a jelly bar that's covered in chocolate. Mmm, that's really good. Not too sugary or sickly or anything. So if you'd like to get yourself some treats to stuff in your mouth, head over to freedommallows.com and use code CEDRIC10 to get 10% off your order. And it's now time for the chocolate. It's about 170 grams of dark chocolate that I just chopped up. Uh, one was just plain dark chocolate and the other one was lime and sea salt and I just wasn't so keen on it as an eating chocolate. I think it's gonna be incredible in cookies. So I've got a cup chopped, that's gonna go in there. And then I've kept about maybe a quarter cup, third of a cup that I'll put on top of the cookies. Work that into the dough. So once you get it to here, so it's all nicely 
distributed. I'm going to stick in some plant milk. I'm using split pea milk, but any I'm sure will work fine. So I'm going to scatter it across. Just setting up two trays with baking sheets on them, just silicone baking sheets. And then with the marshmallows, I kind of flatten them all and then stop the bag in the freezer. If I'm remembering the recipe that I saw a while back correctly, and if I find it, I'll stick the link in the description. Freezing it stops it melting before the cookies bake, because otherwise I guess it can just completely melt, whereas I do want a little bit of kind of fluffiness inside. But they're slightly, slightly flattened. So my hands are slightly wet shove it in and then mold the cookie around it. Make sure it's all enveloped. That's probably about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half worth of mixture, but do whatever, you know, whatever size you like. I just have no idea if these are gonna spread massively. Managed to get 22 cookies out of that batch. So put these in for about 15 minutes. Cookies have had 15 minutes, so I'm going to pull one tray out and then I can push the chocolate in. And I've turned the oven off as well, but I just don't want the other one to cool down before I've pressed the extra chocolate in. So there's a fair bit of spread, but that's okay. So I'm just going to tuck these in. It does look like the marshmallows have completely um, melted. Ooh, I'm going to run out of chocolate, aren't I? Yes, <laughs> I've been too, uh, too generous. I probably do 200 grams of chocolate, so two chocolate bars, and then you should have enough to do the extra bits on top. So these ones were on the lower shelf, and it seems like they've spread much more. So I'm gonna let these cool down at least half an hour, I reckon, just so it can firm back up again, because I've just lifted one and it's very soggy underneath. It's cookie eating time, and I'm very excited because the house smells incredible. <laughs> Oh, I've got a feeling these are going to be delicious. When you take them out of the oven, do leave them on the baking sheets until they're cold, because I pulled one of them off and the bottom stayed on the sheet. <laughs> so I think just everything needs time to cool down and kind of bond back together again. But once they're cool properly, the bottom goes nice and smooth. So just need a little bit of time, a bit of patience. But these are definitely not straight out of the oven into your mouth. So the marshmallow in the middle there, you can just see it. Obviously it has melted a lot. <laughs> so it hasn't got necessarily the kind of stuffing that I'd hoped for, but I think that's gonna be delicious nonetheless. The chomp. Mm. <laughs> that's delicious. The texture's very crisp. So if you're in the UK, more like a, I guess a biscuit, that kind of texture. And I assume that's because of the gluten-free flour, which is starches. So I guess the chewier cookies, they get that property from wheat gluten, I think. But the flavor's just incredible. I mean, it's vanilla and chocolate. What's not to love? <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's, it's got, it's quite a light texture as well. So you could eat a load of them and it wouldn't feel quite as sickly and heavy as perhaps a, a kind of wheat-based cookie would be. Now I know that the recipe works, I might try putting ground almonds in next time. So maybe substitute in half one of the cups of flour, maybe put ground almonds instead, and then maybe have to tweak the liquid. But I think that might give a slight bit more mm, tenderness. I don't know how else to describe it, but slightly more crumbly and a little bit chewier. And then the marshmallowy bit, I've kind of been working my way into it. So that, does give it a very chewy kind of texture. Mm. A bit like caramel, that kind of texture. And that goes really nicely because the biscuit's quite crisp, so when you chew them together, mmm. <laughs> For more evidence that being vegan and gluten-free doesn't mean you have to limit yourself, hit subscribe, tap the bell icon, and let's see what else there is.